In the vast tapestry of Earth's history, certain chapters are marked by the disappearance of remarkable creatures, leaving behind only whispers in the fossil record. Join us on a journey through time as we unveil the final documented observations of four extinct animals. From the thunderous footsteps of the majestic mammoths to the haunting calls of the elusive dodo, each species paints a vivid portrait of evolution's ebb and flow. Through meticulous research and poignant accounts, we'll delve into the poignant tales of these vanished giants, shedding light on the mysteries of their existence and the lessons they leave behind. Barbary lion, a symbol of strength and majesty, also known as the North African lion or the Egyptian lion, once roamed the mountains and deserts of North Africa from Egypt to Morocco. With its impressive stature and majestic mane, this subspecies of lion captured the imagination of many. In this section, we'll delve into the physical characteristics, habitat and historical significance of the Barbary lion. Standing at an impressive height of around 3 to 3.5 feet, 90 to 105 centimeters, at the shoulder, the Barbary lion was one of the largest lion subspecies. It weighed between 350 to 420 pounds, 160 to 190 kilograms on average, making it a formidable predator in its native habitat. The most striking feature of the Barbary lion was its mane, which was longer and more luxuriant than that of other lion subspecies. Reports from hunters and naturalists described the mane as having unique colours not seen in other lions, adding to its allure and mystique. The Barbary lion inhabited a diverse range of habitats, including mountainous regions, deserts and coastal areas. Its range extended from Egypt in the east to Morocco in the west, encompassing the rugged terrain of the Atlas Mountains and the arid landscapes of the Sahara Desert. This adaptability allowed the Barbary lion to thrive in a variety of environments, from dense forests to open grasslands. However, as human populations expanded and habitats were increasingly encroached upon, the Barbary lion's range began to shrink, leading to its eventual demise. Throughout history, the Barbary lion held a prominent place in the cultures and folklore of North Africa. Revered as symbols of strength and royalty, Barbary lions were often depicted in ancient art and mythology, serving as powerful symbols of nobility and courage. Their presence in royal menageries and hunting expeditions further solidified their status as prized possessions of kings and rulers. However, as European colonization and the spread of firearms brought about rapid changes in the region, the Barbary lion's once thriving population began to decline rapidly. The decline of the Barbary lion can be attributed to a combination of factors, including habitat loss, human wildlife conflict, and widespread hunting. As European powers sought to expand their influence in North Africa, the Barbary lion became a target for big game hunters and trophy collectors. Bounties were placed on their heads, and their habitats were increasingly encroached upon by human settlements and agricultural activities. By the late 19th century, the Barbary lion had virtually disappeared from the wild, with only a few scattered individuals remaining in captivity. Despite the Barbary lion's rapid decline, scattered sightings were reported well into the 20th century. In 1925, the last recorded photo of a wild Barbary lion was taken, marking the end of an era. However, the true final sighting occurred over a decade later in 1956, when several individuals on a bus witnessed a lone Barbary lion just north of the town of Setif in Algeria. As the lion disappeared into a forested area, it marked the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy of resilience and regret. Despite the Barbary lion's extinction in the wild, efforts are underway to preserve its genetic legacy through captive breeding programs and conservation initiatives. Zoos and wildlife sanctuaries around the world house captive Barbary lions, providing a glimpse into the past and serving as ambassadors for their species. These efforts aim to raise awareness about the plight of the Barbary lion and inspire action to protect other endangered species facing similar threats. In addition to captive breeding programs, 
conservation organisations are working to preserve the remaining habitat suitable for reintroducing captive bred Barbary lions into the wild. Initiatives such as habitat restoration, community engagement and anti-poaching efforts are crucial for creating a conducive environment for their reintroduction and ensuring their long-term survival. Next, we turn our attention to the dodo. Raphus cucullatus is perhaps one of the most iconic symbols of extinction, capturing the imagination of generations with its peculiar appearance and tragic demise. Native to the island of Mauritius in the Indian Ocean, the dodo was a flightless bird that once thrived in the island's lush forests and coastal plains. In this section, we'll explore the unique characteristics, habitat and historical significance of the dodo, as well as its final recorded sightings before disappearing forever. Standing at around 3 feet, 1 meter, tall and weighing approximately 20 to 50 pounds, 9 to 23 kilograms, the dodo was a plump and stout bird with a distinct appearance. It had a large bulbous beak, small wings and robust legs adapted for walking rather than flying. The dodo's plumage was predominantly greyish brown, with patches of white feathers on its belly and wings. Despite its ungainly appearance, the dodo was well adapted to its island habitat, where it had no natural predators and ample food sources. The dodo inhabited the dense forests and coastal plains of Mauritius, where it foraged for fruits, seeds and small invertebrates. Its isolated island habitat provided a sanctuary from predators, allowing the dodo to thrive and evolve in relative isolation. However, the arrival of humans and the introduction of invasive species spelled doom for the dodo and its ecosystem. First encountered by Dutch sailors in 1598, the dodo quickly captured the attention of European explorers and naturalists who marvelled at its unique appearance and behaviour. Descriptions of the dodo by early voyagers painted a picture of a curious and docile bird that was unafraid of humans. Unfortunately, this fearlessness ultimately proved to be the dodo's downfall, as it made easy prey for sailors and settlers. The decline of the dodo can be traced back to the arrival of humans on Mauritius in the early 17th century. As settlers cleared forests for agriculture and introduced invasive species such as rats, pigs and monkeys, the dodo's habitat was increasingly degraded and its food sources depleted. Hunting by sailors and settlers further accelerated the decline of the dodo population, driving it to the brink of extinction. The last confirmed sighting of a dodo occurred in 1662 when stranded sailors encountered the birds on the shores of Mauritius. Unaware of the significance of their actions, the sailors captured and killed several dodos, sealing the species' fate. Subsequent unconfirmed sightings and claims by the governor of Mauritius fueled speculation about the dodo's continued existence. However, by the late 17th century, the dodo had vanished from the face of the earth, leaving behind a legacy of extinction and ecological upheaval. While the dodo is no longer with us, its legacy lives on as a symbol of the consequences of human actions on the natural world. Conservation efforts are underway to preserve the memory of the dodo and raise awareness about the importance of protecting endangered species and their habitats. Museums and educational institutions around the world showcase dodo specimens and artefacts, allowing visitors to learn about the bird's unique biology and tragic demise. In addition to educational outreach, conservation organisations are working to protect the remaining habitats on Mauritius and other islands in the Indian Ocean. Efforts such as habitat restoration, invasive species control and captive breeding programs aim to restore and conserve the ecosystems that once supported the dodo and other endemic species. Moving on, we delve into the depths of the ocean to discover the enigmatic Stella's sea cow. Discovered by explorer George Stella in 1741, Stella's sea cow, Hydrodamalus gigas, was a remarkable creature that once inhabited the waters of the North Pacific. 
towering in size and gentle in demeanor, this Cyrenian species captured the imagination of early naturalists with its unique appearance and behavior. In this section, we'll explore the physical characteristics, habitat, and historical significance of Stella's sea cow, as well as its final recorded sightings before disappearing forever. Stella's sea cow was the largest Cyrenian species to have ever existed, reaching lengths of up to 30 feet, 9 meters, and weighing an estimated 8 to 10 metric tons. Its elongated body was covered in a thick layer of blubber, which provided insulation against the cold waters of the North Pacific. The sea cow had small paddle-like flippers and a broad, flat tail, which it used to propel itself through the water with surprising agility. Stella's sea cow inhabited the coastal waters of the North Pacific, particularly around the Commander Islands between Alaska and Russia. Its range extended from the shallow coastal waters to deeper offshore habitats, where it fed on kelp and other marine vegetation. Despite its large size, Stella's sea cow was a proficient swimmer, capable of diving to depths of up to 30 metres in search of food. The discovery of Stella's sea cow by George Stella in 1741 sparked widespread interest among European naturalists and explorers. Descriptions of the sea cow's unique appearance and behaviour fascinated early observers, who marvelled at its gentle demeanour and slow-moving nature. Unfortunately, this docility ultimately proved to be the sea cow's downfall, as it made easy prey for hunters and sailors. The decline of Stella's sea cow can be traced back to the arrival of European explorers and fur traders in the North Pacific, as sailors and hunters exploited the sea cow's slow-moving nature and abundant blubber for profit, its population began to decline rapidly. Within a few decades of its discovery, Stella's sea cow had vanished from the seas, with the last recorded sighting occurring in deep waters off the coast of Kamchatka. The last confirmed sighting of Stella's sea cow occurred in 1768, when a group of sailors encountered a lone individual swimming in deep waters. Despite efforts to capture or observe the animal, it quickly disappeared from view, leaving behind a legacy of mystery and intrigue. Nearly two centuries later, in 1963, an unconfirmed sighting off the coast of Kamchatka reignited interest in this enigmatic creature, but subsequent efforts to locate or verify its existence were unsuccessful. Despite its tragic demise, the memory of Stella's sea cow lives on as a symbol of the fragility of life and the impact of human activities on the natural world. Efforts are underway to raise awareness about the plight of this magnificent creature and to preserve its memory for future generations. Museums and educational institutions showcase specimens and artefacts related to Stella's sea cow, allowing visitors to learn about its biology, behavior, and tragic extinction. In addition to educational outreach, conservation organizations are working to protect the remaining habitats of other Cyrenian species, such as the manatee and dugong. Efforts to conserve coastal ecosystems, regulate hunting and fishing activities, and reduce human impacts on marine environments are crucial for ensuring the survival of these vulnerable species. Our final stop takes us to the windswept shores of the North Atlantic, where the great Aoke once thrived in abundance. The great Aok, Pinguinus impenis, was a remarkable bird that once inhabited the windswept shores of the North Atlantic. Resembling a penguin in appearance, the great Aoke was a flightless bird that spent much of its life forging the frigid waters of the North Atlantic. In this section, we'll explore the physical characteristics, habitat, and historical significance of the great auk, as well as its final recorded sightings before disappearing forever. Standing at around two feet, 60 centimeters tall, and weighing approximately 5 to 8 pounds, 2.3 to 3.6 kilograms, the great ARK was a formidable swimmer and fish eater. It had a sleek black and white plumage with a distinctive white patch on its belly and a large hooked beak adapted for catching fish. Despite its flightless nature, the great ARK was a proficient swimmer, capable of diving to depths of up to 100 feet, 30 meters, in search of food. The Great AOK inhabited remote islands and coastal regions throughout the North Atlantic, ranging from northern Spain to Canada and Greenland. Its range included rocky outcrops, cliffs and offshore islands, where it nested and foraged for food in the nutrient-rich waters of the North Atlantic. 
despite its widespread distribution, the Great ALK's isolated island habitats made it vulnerable to exploitation by humans. The Great ALK held a prominent place in the cultures and folklore of indigenous peoples and early European settlers. Revered as symbols of abundance and resilience, Great ALKs were often depicted in ancient art and mythology, serving as powerful symbols of the ocean's bounty. However, as European colonisation and the spread of firearms brought about rapid changes in the region, the Great Aoke's once thriving population began to decline rapidly. The decline of the Great Aoke can be attributed to a combination of factors, including habitat destruction, overhunting and climate change. As European settlers exploited the birds' down feathers for pillows and clothing, its population began to decline rapidly. By the early 19th century, the Great Ayuk had virtually disappeared from many of its former breeding grounds, with only a few scattered individuals remaining on remote islands. The last confirmed sighting of a Great Ayuk occurred in 1852, when ornithologist Henry Drummond encountered a lone bird wandering the shores of Newfoundland. As Drummond watched the Great Ayuk disappear into the distance, he bore witness to the end of an era, leaving behind a legacy of extinction and regret. Despite subsequent unconfirmed sightings and claims by fishermen and sailors, the Great Alk had vanished from the face of the earth, leaving behind a legacy of extinction and ecological upheaval. While the Great AUK may be gone, its memory lives on as a symbol of the consequences of human actions on the natural world. Efforts are underway to raise awareness about the plight of this magnificent bird and to preserve its memory for future generations. Museums and educational institutions showcase specimens and artefacts related to the Great Ayak, allowing visitors to learn about its biology, behaviour and tragic extinction. In addition to educational outreach, conservation organisations are working to protect the remaining habitats of seabirds and other marine species. Efforts to conserve coastal ecosystems, regulate hunting and fishing activities and reduce human impacts on marine environments are crucial for ensuring the survival of vulnerable species and their habitats. Our expedition into the realm of extinct wonders let us carry forward the lessons learned from these extraordinary creatures. Their legacy serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of the importance of conservation and preservation in safeguarding our planet's precious biodiversity. Together, let us honour their memory by taking action to protect and cherish the natural world around us. Thank you for joining us on this journey, and may the stories of Earth's lost wonders inspire us to strive for a brighter, more sustainable future for all life on our planet.